Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and I've got a question here which was kind of giving me a little bit of a hard time. So I thought, who can I ask? And it's a plumbing question, so I thought there is no better man to ask than James, a plumber part. So we got him on the screen, we got him on the line. So hello, James, how are you doing? Hello, Roger, how's it going? Oh, you've obviously, uh, well, you've put me under a lot of pressure already, mate. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Let's I'm, see how I'm, we go. I'm, blowing smoke up your backside you can see that mate can't you i could have asked any one of a hundred different youtube plumbers and they all would have been similarly baffled wow. and there are a lot of them now i remember yeah. when I saw that, there was hardly any now there's loads <laughs> <laughs> it's it is amazing isn't it we weren't the originals though james were we who was the first youtube plumber ultimate handyman i'd have said he did quite oh, a lot of yeah 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 good absolutely yeah and it's very meticulous isn't he in his way Okay, James, so what I'm going to show you now is a little video that somebody sent in. You can hear the water running through the radiator now. It's just starting up, but that noise stays all the time. It only stops when the boiler stops firing. As I said, it sounds like the water's running through. I don't know whether or not the water is draining from the, from the rad somehow. <coughs> It sounds like it's refilling all the time, but it, I've bled it, water's coming out. So James, um, I kind of thought about this and I've got my ideas, but I wanted to hear your ideas because I, I made a couple of suggestions to the guy, but I told him I was going to get in touch with you and ask you what you thought. So what do you think, James? Well, firstly, just start at the basics. If it's a pressurised system, just make sure that it's properly pressurised for a start and make sure that the radiator is vented. That's important, especially with co uh, column radiators. Uh, and I'll, there, it's more important, actually. With, I mean, it's important with every radiator, but column radiators have a small diverter in them that forces water up the first column and then it cascades from the top bit all the way back down the remaining column so it heats up evenly. Um so make sure the pressure is correct if it's pressurized. Make sure there's no air in the radiator. And obviously, if it's an F and E fed system, make sure that your tank's got the you know the feed to the system is unblocked because they can block. Mm. I bet you've cut them out a few times in the past. Mm. Yeah, yeah, back, yeah, yeah. Go back oh, specifically to the radiator itself. That sort of sound to me says that there's actually too high a flow going through the radiator. So it probably needs to be balanced, um, which means we kind of which means we shut down the lock shield side of the radiator valve. Uh, also, with this sort of thing, it might it can indicate that the pump speed is set too high on the system. Uh, but generally, with this this kind of problem, it's it's more to do with the radiator itself. So get that radiator balance down, uh, which effectively means you shut the radiator completely on the lock shield and then give it a quarter of a turn open. Then wait 20 minutes with the system running to make sure that it gets fully up to temperature again without making that noise. If it's done that, you've solved the problem. He's bled the radiator. The plumber that put it in has been back a couple of times, balanced the system and they've managed to get all the other radiators working. Some of them weren't, but he's managed to get all the other radiators working. But that particular one, even if he plays around with the lock shield valve and so on, he still can't get rid of that noise. The noise is the thing. So if he turns the lock shield valve right down, the noise is still there, turns it right up, the noise is still there. Now, you, it's interesting what you're saying about the diverter inside the column radiator, because we must emphasize this is a column radiator we're looking at and not a panel one, not, not a horizontal one. So that diverter inside there that's going to make the water go to the top of the radiator, that's in one side of the radiator. Yeah, the, the other thing it can be is either, because <laughs> sometimes you have to put the diverters in yourself, so yeah. it might not have been put in when the radiator was installed and it's just mm. shooting across the bottom of the radiator yeah. it can yeah. cause that noise. Mm. Or, of course, um, the flow is coming in from the wrong side of where the diverter is. Usually you have a little, I mean, you've seen them loads of times, Roger, when you mm. buy these column radiators, they usually have a little red sticker on the back on the side that is where you should feed it from. Mm. But Absolutely. Sometimes yeah. people don't see that or take any notice of it. So the, the other thing is, is to take the radiator off, <laughs> which is going to be a load of fun, um, to have a look on the back and see, firstly, is there a diverter present and is it piped up properly on the flow? Yeah, so you could get a mirror, maybe just poke it up behind the radiator and see if there's a little red dot on there or something like that. 
other than that, he's got to take that red off. The plumber will come back and take the red off, have a look, check it. Now, I said to him uh, that I would like to see the pipe work to the radiator. And the only reason I asked him was to get some context because I thought I might learn something here. Uh, but I didn't expect to, but I kind of just said to him, and he said, oh, I'm going to have to take the worktop off to get to show you the pipe work. I said, oh, no, don't do that. And he said, no, it's easy. It's, it comes off very, very quickly. So he did. And this morning he sent me another bit of video, if you like, which I'm now going to show you, which for me rings alarm bells. So let's just have a look at that. So here, James, we've got the pipe work. Right. Which ones go to the radio? These ones here, James, along the top. You can see they're right low down there. So they go up and then down yeah, to the right. Yeah, you watch. Yeah, you watch. He's just going to go there, James. So stick with him. He's going to move the camera over a bit. Now you can see the pipe work over there. Now <laughs> look what it does. Oh, I Straight love down. It. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a big old airlock going on there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So there you right, go. The he's, got a couple of, he's got a couple of little baller fixes on there. That's why he's done it, isn't he? He couldn't get the this 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 radiator has been installed after that boiler was fitted. Obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the only way they could get to it, I guess. Yeah, short of chasing out a bit behind the boiler mm. to get the pipes through. I mean, you're gonna have to have a couple of automatic air vents in there, but really, mm. I prefer to change the pipe work. Um, yeah. Just getting there and do it. It's, was it half a day's work? Day's work, just draining yeah. it down, getting it all cut in properly. Yeah, that's that's. That's definitely some of the problem there, isn't it? That put a whole different complexion on it, didn't it? That video yeah. coming through this morning just goes to show why, although I said to him, oh, don't bother showing me the pipe work if it's, a, if it's a fag, I'm really glad he did because I think there's a lot of stuff going on. Like you say, a high spot in the pipe work, airlock. How does that alter the situation? Because you said to me, it's probably too much flow going through there. Now are you thinking <laughs> it's not enough? or, it's, or it's yeah, it's not enough. You could maybe on the odd occasion get glugs of air coming through. Yeah. Um, you might have a lot on the flow and not much on the return, depending. It's just not going to be balanced or working properly. Mm. doesn't matter how many times you bleed it, how much inhibitor you put in. Having high points like that is going to cause trouble, which is yeah. why when we, I mean, when when I fit anything, I generally try and make it so there's no high points. Mm. Uh, or there's one high point, and that is generally in the airing cupboard. Um, so you can bleed it pump. yeah exactly that'd be your, next to your pump next to your three port or two port valve depending on what kind of system you have um mm -hmm. i mean in that situation the best thing he's going to do is and it's not going to like it but change that pipe work get it get it down low mm -hmm. uh it's going to be one of those gutsy jobs but plumbing is a gutsy trade so mm -hmm. down there and and get it swapped over my my approach i think to this might be to put a couple of little air cocks, not auto ones because i just wanted and, and i probably would have just cut the pipe work put in a couple of air cocks bled it then seen if there was a difference in the sound see if that solved the problem yeah because it could be chasing but but you're dead right i mean ultimately you want to get that pipe work going down in the kick space under the the unit there mm. and coming up by the boiler because that way it's auto venting if you put a couple of air cocks in there you put auto ones in there they're likely to weep or leak or if you put manual ones in there you've got to know they're there you've got to be up there bleeding them every so often so mm. there's no substitute really for doing a proper nice bit of pipe work well designed is there and, and also an air automatic air vent on the return it's very very rare and i've never i don't think i've ever got it yeah, it can suck in. Um, the other thing as well, just mentioning, going back to the balancing of the radiators, I've mm. got a feeling that's the first rad on the on the loop. Is it's right? Yeah, next it is. To You're absolutely right. So, it is. Yeah, so that is going to need to be pretty much like one Choke tenth down. of a turn open, um, mm. and that might make a big difference as well. Just as ever with this sort of thing, there's probably four or five things you can do to improve the situation. Mm. Um, yeah, and just give yourself the best chance of sorting it out. I, I'm just going to throw one more possibility at you is that the actual bit of air that you can hear is in the pipe going down to the radiator. In other words, it's trying to clear that and it's bouncing up and down that bit of air in the pipe going back up to the elbow. 
and that is being amplified through the radiator yeah. rather than it being air in the actual radiator because he's bled it. He's got so I don't know whether that's a possibility, whether noises you can hear on the radiator are sometimes referred noises, whether they're happening somewhere else on the system and the radiator is acting as a sounding board. Do you think that's possible? Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, go back to the days of old. People used to communicate, didn't they? Yeah, uh, <laughs> tapping on the pipes. Prisoners. Uh, yeah, you're in, right. In prison. <laughs> oh, it's luxury, mate. If you had heating in your cell, you were lucky. <laughs> we we never had it. <laughs> not, not in Dartmoor. Yeah. <laughs> it's um yeah it's just uh it's totally normal for sound to to go down pipes uh yeah. that's why when the, when you're laying in bed in the morning you can hear the radiators clicking in another room can't you i remember doing it with my dad during an apprenticeship if we wanted to find out what pipe went where to another room tapping it. you put you can get your yeah, tap it get yourself a long screwdriver put that on the pipe put your ear on it get your old man to tap it somewhere else and you'd know instantly whether he was tapping the same pipe or not, even funny if enough. It was meters away. Yeah, you know? well, I was doing that in Dylan's house, funny enough. We did have a bit of a, a situation where we weren't sure which pipe was going where and, and it was like that. I said, just keep tapping on it. I'll yeah. I'll keep listening. But uh, and then again, if two pipes touch together, you get referred noise as well, don't you? So well, and, and also I use the same technique to balance radiators as well, because especially if you've got a lot of flow, uh, you can get your your um, screwdriver onto the radiator valve, the lock shield valve, and mm. you can actually shut it and hear it wisp shut. So it'll go, and then yeah. you're trying to do yeah. the sound. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, uh, no, no. You open it up. You just try and get that nice little wisp coming through, um, and yeah, you know you've got it balanced then, or as close. You as know you what? Can. It's it's funny you should say that because I was thinking only the other day that how many senses you use when you're fault finding. You're using sense of smell, hearing, sight, obviously touch. You know, you're, you're touching different pipes, trying to feel. So you need to have all those senses if you, you're going to do that job, don't you, really? And the, and the, oh, the biggest yeah. one you need is a brain that doesn't jump to conclusions all the time. Go, oh, I know what that is. Just because it's been that the last 10 times doesn't yeah. mean it's going to be like that this time. Are you right? Well, I mean, we were speaking earlier on, weren't we? Or, or um, we had a little chat off camera, didn't we, about mm. expecting a baby coming through and mm. learning how to use your hands and everything. Like at the weekend, I was helping a friend take out a kitchen um, and you're just laying there on your back trying to get a flexi put back onto a kitchen tap in yeah. the pitch dark. Uh, and it, oh, one of those ones as well, he called me out to it. It'd be an easy job. Get there. They've got an in sync rater. And you, oh, yeah. Like those things are like uh, yeah. um but yeah it's just amazing how much you use and i think sometimes the biggest thing is persistence and willpower you know what it made me think back to doing my apprenticeship with my dad when sometimes he'd say well done because that was not easy you mm. were laying under that kickboard or whatever that's you why know, he put you there wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> you learn the hard way don't you, you know? he wasn't gonna go under there one thing i discovered get yourself a cushion put uh, it under your head because when you're yeah. under there in that sink and you're just trying to reach up to that pipe work it, 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 your neck after about 10 minutes your neck is strained and and then yeah. you're getting in a bad mood and then you, you're losing your temper with it so i just thought right get comfortable and i say to them i'm just going to get a cushion here or something have you got something old bit of towel or something i can Ow, put yeah. under my head and i think oh you're going to go to sleep there i must say james if if i may if i may just sort of uh, digress slightly here this is confessions of a plumber now isn't it right so years ago there was this very quite attractive slightly older woman you know she's about 40 years old right and um okay. i knew her she phoned me up she said i want you to plumb my washing machine i've got a new washing machine i said all right okay maybe sometime next week i might have a no she said i want it done this afternoon it's saturday afternoon and i said really i said you're gonna have to pay me emergency call out money on a saturday afternoon she said, that's all right she said i, I need it I've got, I've got washing piling up i want to get it done i'm there and, and i'm in that thing i was stretched out on the floor I've got my head up inside the kitchen cabinet and um is the funky bass guitar start playing now yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking up they're struggling to get this um i mean washing machine tap connector on there and or whatever she needs to get to the sink so <laughs> i said oh don't worry i'll move she said no 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 stay where you are and i was lying there you can imagine and she straddled me She straddled me with a very short skirt <laughs> and she had on a pair of red stilettos. So she was dressed for the occasion. She was dressed for the discount. <laughs> dressed for the discount. 
<laughs> and I looked up from my little lowly perch there. Oh, mate. I thought I was that close to my hand straying to touch her ankle. I thought that would have been the end of it, wouldn't it? That would have been a, you know, a, a sexual assault charge on me. You know, years ago uh, this was before that sort of thing was a commonplace. But I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I was shaking under there. Honestly, I just thought, what are you doing? You know, uh, you and know she what? Was clearly uh, going for the. Well, she she obviously liked you very much, Roger. I don't think she did. I think she liked a cheap plumbing job, James. I got I got to be uh, fair. I think. Any plumber would have done. I, I had, she probably got her whole house done up like that as well, you know. Yeah. Well, one time I was working for a lovely young lady. She's looking down to the house. Yeah, yeah. She's all right. She'll watch it. Um, <laughs> she was probably in her mid-20s. And um, she was lovely. Beautiful girl. Um, I was working around there. And at one point she said, I was standing on the steps looking in, a, in the loft. And she said, oh, you've got a lovely bum, but in, mm. in a different way. And I was like, okay, mm. thank you very much. Later that night, about one or two in the morning, my phone goes off, starts ringing, and it's this customer. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, here we go. It must be a leak or something. I've forgotten mm. to tighten something up. But no, she'd gone up in the loft, apparently, mm. and kicked the loft ladder away by accident. Oh, yeah. And was ringing up. She said, I'm in my nighty. I'm up in the loft. And I can't get down. Can you come and get me out? Well, I said, I, I said no. No. Oh really? Did you? You didn't tell her to call. You didn't tell her to call the Bisbee then. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that from now on. <laughs> yeah. I'll say, here you go. He's Roger's QR code. You give him a Cambridge. Ring. <laughs> That's only a fifty-mile drive for a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I you know, didn't go. You'll be up there now. <laughs> you didn't go, James. Mate, I was laying in bed next to the missus. I'm not going to go off one in the morning or whatever to get nah, some twenty-five-year-old girl out of a loft. You're a good man, because you never know where it would end. You sell at the call to fire brigade, did you? They love it, the fire yeah, brigade. Go on, go, yeah, you yeah. get the It'll fire brigade, you'll be fine. But, yeah, <laughs> it's mad the stuff that goes on, isn't it, when you're out yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. No. Should we start a new channel, James? Confessions of Plumbers. I think we should. I think we should. Tell you what, actually, thinking about what's been going on at work, because we're recording this around Remembrance Day. Yeah. I went to do a job for a guy in a little village and he was about 90, it had been mid nineties. And this was a good 10, 15 years ago. And I went around there and his house, you know, it's like going to an old person's house. It sort of smelt a bit of wee and the things that you, you mm. know, sometimes, well, it happens to us all, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, this, with me, mate, more than you, obviously. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, this young girl was um, sort of just absentmindedly kind of cleaning him up wasn't talking to him or anything. And he was just sat there all lowly and just sort of looking. And I went to find his stopcock in the cupboard. And in his cupboard, there was an army jacket, like an old army jacket. And on the shoulder, it said Devon Shears. And I love history and talking to my customers about stuff. And I went into this room and I said to him, excuse me, I saw you've got a Devon Shears patch on uh, army patch in your, in your airing cupboard. I said, did you serve it, serve in the army? And this man just completely changed in front of me, came alive. And he said his first words, he said, I was shot getting out of a tank in Arnhem. Oh, <laughs> Operation Market Garden. Yeah, yeah. And this girl had never spoke to him. And he just, him and me just spoke for, must have been a couple of hours yeah, about yeah. The stuff this guy had done, you know. And yeah. um, if there's one thing about working as a tradesman or going into people's homes, that is the most interesting part of it is speaking to loads of different people who've had, you know, all these different experiences, you know? So yeah, a bit of a tangent, but. No, no, I, I absolutely have always been, I think guys who go out and, and do site plumbing, you know, they're in there every day that there's a certain appeal to that because it's all new build all, you know, but a bit laddie, something a, you're with the lads. Uh, it's something about being a, a domestic plumber where you're going around the customer's houses, meeting people and, hearing their stories and honestly you don't make any money because you're sitting there for two hours listening to their stories drinking their tea yeah eating their cake and um and by the time you think what can i charge this guy for that especially as he's served in blooming on and all the rest of it you know <laughs> so so you know people won't believe that about plumbers because they think oh they're all rogues they're all money grabbing so and so's but I, I, honestly i'm completely with you on that the, the number of people i've met over the years with amazing stories, absolutely amazing stories. It's it's yeah. just fantastic, you know. Yeah, and if you're prepared to talk to people and and 
make your job a little bit more about just fixing things. Mm. I think it's the best part of the job is just me. It is. It, to me, it is definitely the best part of the job. And yeah. I think that I've said this before, but sometimes when I go into a house to speak to somebody, I'm aware that I might have been the only person they've spoken to that day or even sometimes that week. Yeah. And you can't just rush in, rush out and ignore them and, you know, they offer you a cup of tea, go, no, thanks, you know, and, and you're off because you're in a rush to get somewhere else. You can, you obviously you have to do that sometimes, but if you've got the time to just have a little chat with them, it's it's worth a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Fills you up, James, yeah. but good on you, good it's on you. Does. So you know you know a bit about the old military uh, badges and so on then, yeah? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. My, my passion is history, definitely, yeah. outside of plumbing. Cricket, <laughs> and cricket. Music, cricket. Yeah. Flying. Flying. <laughs> it's quite yeah. a thing. You see, this is why I said when we, we spoke about people, you know, doing several things in their life and having several interests in the video, I, that actually hit a spot where a lot of people said, oh, thanks for making this video. I've always felt a bit ashamed of the fact that I flipped from this and I've I've been 10 different things in my life. But yeah, as I say, we put you up as an example of somebody who's got your pilot's license, done quite a number of things. And, um, you know, so it's it's good to see, isn't it? It just makes you a more rounded person. You should never be ashamed of being a tradesman, ever. It's no. I, I tell you, there's a lot of people with the names on the side of their van who earn way more and are way happier than people who went to university. Uh, mm. There's a stigma, and it's still there now. I think it's get, getting better, but there mm. is still a stigma against people who work with their hands, and there shouldn't be because without us, nothing would happen. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I would just say, though, in defence, because my uh, – Oh, oh, sorry. I'm going to say four of my kids now have all been to university. That you know of, Roger. That you know. Yeah, of. the ones. Well, this is what my <laughs> wife's worried about. Quite honestly, she keeps <laughs> saying to me, "Oh, how many more are there? How many more?" Yeah. But anyway, um, they've all been to university. So I would say that it can work out very nicely for people, and that, that some people get a lot out of it. Dylan's, yeah. who is who is controlling this program at the moment, his daughter is currently at university and thinks she's struggling slightly. I think that'd be fair to say just getting used to it and it's maybe not the happy experience for everybody that it could be mm -hmm. and um yeah sometimes it takes a while to adjust and settle down doesn't it and also i think whatever you're doing now if you're 18 even if you're 30 that's probably not going to be what you're doing when you're 50 work-wise mm. i think a lot of people change don't they you know mm. i don't know i was going to do a youtube channel i very much doubt you did either roger no 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 we just sort no, of end no. up convecting to this you know or just moving yeah yeah, the... yeah life is something that happens while you're busy making plans you know and uh, take any opportunity that arises thanks for the chat james thanks for solving that problem i hope you've solved that problem for the guy but i'll get back to him and let him know good to see you james when's the baby due uh end of feb uh, so oh, we're doing right. well. So and it's yeah. a leap year next year. So you know, one birthday every four years. <laughs> Lovely thing. You, you um, plan that well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll have to have you on the channel as well. We're doing some. Um, we're we're recording our DIY Friday this Saturday, uh, which is going to be going out for the Christmas special. But it'd be great to have you on that in the new year. If that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. 